past few years, the People's Republic of China has been the best friend of Republican climate change denialists. Because even after losing the argument on the climate scientists, the denialists could fall back on this argument. The rest of the world, including China, the world's biggest emitter of greenhouse gases, won't do anything to slow climate change, so why should we? China, India, all these countries that are still growing, and they're not going to stop doing what they're doing. America's a country, it's not a planet. The experts agree that a climate policy that does not include massive energy consumers like China and India is essentially meaningless. We can't do it alone as one nation. The, the benefit, I think, is difficult to justify when you realize that it's, it's only us doing it, nobody else is doing this. I don't think we can control the emissions from China and India, nor do they have any desire to control it. The United States is a country, it's not a planet. If we have statements such as we do, do have from the leaders in China, in India, in other countries saying under no circumstances are they going to accept any kind of mandatory reduction. What are we doing here? And so here's what's happened over the last nine months. In secret, the U.S. government and China negotiated a climate agreement. And then Barack Obama flew to China and he sat across from the Chinese president for five hours and put the finishing touches on that agreement. And then today, the president turned around to the denialists and said, oh, really? China's going to do nothing, huh? Well, let me tell you about this little deal I worked out with the president of China. Today, I am proud that we can announce a historic agreement. I commend President Xi, his team, and the Chinese government for the commitment they are making to slow, peak, and then reverse the course of China's carbon emissions. China and the U.S. are responsible for more than 40 percent of the world's carbon emissions. Under the agreement announced this morning, the U.S. is setting a new target to cut carbon emissions by 26 to 28 percent by 2025, while China is agreeing to start reducing emissions by 2030. That means they'll peak in 2030 and to make clean energy 20 percent of its total energy production. Now, that is a huge deal because over the past 15 years, as John Kerry pointed out today, China has accounted for roughly 60 percent of the growth in carbon dioxide emissions worldwide. And now it has agreed to reverse that trend. This deal explicitly addresses and removes the Republican climate denialist's best argument against fighting climate change here in the U.S. And guess what? They are not happy about it. Senator Over James tonight. Inhofe, the climate change denier who will likely soon chair the Environment and Public Works Committee, today called the deal a non-binding charade that won't change China's behavior. And soon-to-be le Senate leader Mitch McConnell had this to say at a photo op with smiling Senate freshmen today. As I read the, uh, the agreement, requires the Chinese to do nothing at all for 16 years uh, while these uh, carbon emission regulations are creating havoc in my state and other states around the country. Mitch McConnell needs to take another look at the agreement. To meet its target of 20 percent clean energy by 2030, China will have to generate more power from clean energy than is generated in all the coal-fired power plants that exist in China today. Enough clean energy to nearly match the total electricity generating capacity of the entire United States.